Hey guys, welcome back to me watching the movie. I am Mike, and today we're reviewing Five Nights at Freddy's. I knew nothing about this franchise, never played the games. I may have looked at it a time or two. One of my kids was really into it for a minute there. But let me just say that I'm really happy for everybody who loves this, the people who really love this, because they do. I mean, there was probably more stuff going out towards Blumhouse about this than there was about Halloween, and I don't know any fan base that's more rabid than Halloween. So I'm happy, super happy for everybody who's a super fan of Five Nights at Freddy's. I hope that this movie kicked all the ass you ever dreamed of in your life, and then it just made your whole effing year. I really do. It didn't for me, but we'll get into why. This is going to be a completely spoiler-free review, by the way. A dude gets a job at a security guard place protecting a Chuck E. Cheese-style joint. Those things come alive and start doing stuff to people's butts. Probably not their butts. Who knows? We will do a spoiler review for this, so make sure that you click subscribe and all that other junk. But let me tell you this. I'm going to start with the positives. I love the cinematography of it. I thought the movie looked great. I thought that pizzeria is a really cool setting. It's not their fault that Willy's Wonderland came first theatrically, because I'm pretty sure this IP was around long before that Nick Cage movie was. And you know what? Fuck, just fucking thank you for making those damn monsters actual animatronics and live action and not CGI. I almost never would have expected that. It's so nice to have people do that. I really wish we can go back. We haven't done it since like the Ninja Turtles. You know what I mean? Like they were cool in the 90s and we haven't done it that cool since. I don't know why nobody takes the time to do it, but huge shout out to them for doing that. So, you know, sometimes when they show them, uh, they, they move awesome. They look cool. The eyes are awesome. There's nothing wrong with the animatronics whatsoever. Sometimes when you look at them, they do have kind of like this sheen of them with the lights and like the, the sheen of it all. They sort of look a little video gamey, but it's based on a video game. So duh. But all that being said, they didn't do jack shit with it. They had all this going for them and nothing happened. Granted, there were some really cool shots where the lights would flicker and you would see one of them in the darkness moving towards you like your, your grandma trying to get you to eat your vegetables. It just nothing happened. It was even worse than they do with like the Conjuring movies and whatnot where the demon will just pop up and go boogity boogity boo and then not hurt anybody and you can go away and you're like, does this demon work in a haunted house? What's going on? They could not actually have them do anything or provide any real scares other than a couple creepy moments. And when they did actually do something, all it would be was them chasing someone down a hallway and the person screaming as the camera cuts away to a different setting. So the PG-13 and that Blumhouse safeness just absolutely killed this movie. I understand that this is a PG-13 movie. It was meant to be that way. It's meant to be gateway horror. And I also understand that far more important to Blumhouse, they're able to get more asses in the seats and more box office revenue by nerfing the shit out of their movies and making them PG-13. I also understand that horror does not have to be rated R to be great. We all know that conversation, Jaws and, and all this stuff like that. But the fact of the matter is, this wasn't one of those situations. It, it wasn't scary because they couldn't do and nothing could actually come of what these situations were. You would have a creepy situation and again, the, ca the camera would just cut away. Can PG-13 horror be scary? Absolutely. Was it here? No. This has the scare level of an episode of Goosebumps, new or old Goosebumps, nothing more. The scariest thing in this movie is actually the script. One of the biggest draws from what I understand about Five Nights at Freddy's is the lore behind all this and how deep it goes and the cool story at hand. And I have to say, I get it. Even though they took the most broken, confusing path ever to get that way, once I learned the story from this movie specifically, I was like, that's cool. That's a rad story. I get why people love it so much, which makes it all the more disappointing that they made it so muddled and got damn broken in this movie there was 101 ways to get to the point of this story and they took the dullest one possible complete with 27 dream sequences there's also plot hor plot whores <laughs> i hate those damn plot whores those plot women of the night but it's like why would this character do this is this the only cop in this entire town is nobody gonna question everything that happened here how is there no recourse i mean did freddie fosbears literally fold up like a circus ufo from killer clowns of outer space and fly away because that's the only reasonable explanation as to why nobody's questioning the events that are going on after this movie plot holes out the animatronic asshole which is another blumhouse problem very simple fixes here if you you could just slap, you know, bad, bad, bad baby, just put some drywall fixer in a couple little areas of this movie and it's fixed, but it feels like Blumhouse just doesn't pay attention to these things. And the story just should have flowed so much easier. There's so many things in this that could have been clearly explained and fixed so many problems if a character would just fucking communicate and explain to the other person. Instead, they'd give like half sentences and speak in fucking riddles, which would make sense if it was a part of the story, but it's not. A character just will decide not to tell someone a pertinent piece of 
information because it's plot armor. Because if they told him, then they wouldn't have this situation happen. And it's so goddamn frustrating. Just talk to each other for God's sake. Once again, the scariest part about this movie is the fucking script. But I leave here on a positive note. Elizabeth Lair, who plays the cop with the most free time in the whole wide world, is awesome. She's going to be fucking huge. Josh Hutchinson, I, I, I did not mind at all. Even though he was playing literally, they had him playing a doped up walking dead zombie extra throughout half of the film, literally a spit falling out of his mouth. I understand it's the character, but still, I thought he was fine in this too. He, For what they asked him to do, he was really good. Piper Rubio, Abby, was really good. I mean, she just broke my heart multiple times in the movie. The acting overall was good. And finally, Matthew Lillard fucking ruled, folks. This man should be in so many more gigantic Hollywood projects. I really hope that this does it for him. Not that he hasn't been in them, but he's just one of the most underrated actors of all time, in my opinion. He gives this movie electricity and life every time he's on the screen. And he could just be sitting there in his dorky glasses talking to somebody on the phone. And it just grabs your attention, man. He's so fucking cool in this movie, and he has some really cool moments. And I just, I wish he was in the movie more. I really do. I will talk about more about him in the spoilers, but... I give Five Nights at Freddy's at the end of the day a 5.5. It is barely fuckable. It's not the worst movie I've ever watched at all. You can sit down and take it in and enjoy the lore and enjoy some decent acting and enjoy the scenery of it all and some moments that could have been creepy had they had any nutsack whatsoever. So it's just barely above average. Another barely above average Blumhouse flick that they're going to make a fuckload of money on. Blumhouse continues to be the king of average while their bank accounts say something completely different. Thank you guys for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe and all that crap for uh, so that you're notified when we put out the spoiler video and all the other horror videos we do. We cover everything on this channel. Michael Myers, Freddy, Jason, all the good shit, all the horror stuff. You get your updates here. We have a good time. We party on live streams. We get naked sometimes, but we don't show that to anyone except for your dad. We love your all's fucking faces. We hope you guys have an amazing day. We'll see you soon. Here comes that white-faced fucker, an asshole like no other. He's a big old piece of shit. Wants to stab your sister's tits cause he's a white-faced fucker. Loomis can't recover. Dr. Challenge drunk again, sleeping with your sister's friends. Do you want to know about the darkness? I said God damn. God damn you fire. Halloween never ends, suck my fucking dick, and I don't really care what Blumhouse fucking says. Put him in a box, or suck a fucking cock. You can say he's dead, but we all know he's not. Yeah. So let's go trick or treating, let's go fucking drinking, let's all go in pumpkin head on VHS.